All right, welcome to this week's walk and talk. We are in Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. Kristin is going to walk on ahead for this video. She's just got her drink there. We've got loads to talk about today. Absolutely crazy stuff to go over today. This week has been, as we talked about before, it's always quiet around Christmas time as we go into the start of Jan. And all of a sudden everything, the crazy just ramps up. And there's been so much that there's just no way I could even cover it all. In fact, I'm going to pack as much as possible into today's video as we walk around this beautiful lake here. But we're going to talk about everything from Germany. What's happening in Germany is absolutely nuts at the moment. Absolutely nuts. Uh, some of those forecasts I made last year have played out in a much worse way than I even expected. We're going to, and by the way, for everyone that says, oh, he's wearing those sunglasses. Oh, oh, guys, it is so bright here. I have to wear sunglasses. I tried doing the video. This is actually the second take. I tried doing a video without sunglasses and I lasted about three minutes and I couldn't even see. It's just too bright here. Okay, I had someone shouting me then. I thought they were saying I couldn't film or something. No, it was just a, a weird girl. But anyway, uh, let's carry, uh, let's carry on. Yeah, can I be in your video? No, 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 you can't. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about everything in the Red Sea. We're going to talk about Iran, Pakistan. We're going to talk a lot of geopolitical stuff. Uh, Iran and Russia, what they've just announced as well. Oh, we got some dancing. We've got some dancing going on down here. Okay, well, yeah, go for it. Enjoy. We've just had a big announcement as well, which is not in any of the media uh, about Iraq, what they've just said about US troops in the country. Um, oh gosh, Biden admin, what they've been up to. Gosh, again, Trump, we got a bit of stuff there. Davos has obviously started this week and the crazy is really ramping up. So with that said, uh, without any further ado, this might be a longer video than usual, but I do need to get into some shade because it was absolutely roasting here. So uh, let's get started. So one of the biggest news this week, then mainly out of Europe, is around, the, is around Germany. There's a lot going on in Germany. There's four or five major events happening right now in Germany. And that's everything from economical to societal, which is interesting because we just talked about these on the WEF Risk Report 2024, which came out a couple of days ago, and then their press conference, which I released that video yesterday. Really good time saver for you if you haven't watched that. But the risk report is fascinating as to, and they're very accurate, these risk reports. And Ray Dalio uh, just came out with something as well, which I thought was interesting for him. Oh, here we go, bit of shade. Ray Dalio just came out and said he sees civil war in the USA. That is staggering for someone like him to actually say. So let's look at Germany then. What's going on? Firstly is the farmers protests. If you remember, we talked about the Netherlands farmers protests and this gained nationwide alternative coverage, not mainstream media coverage. No, they called them right wing uh, extremists. Trump supporters and all this other thing. How they were Trump supporters, if you remember that, um, that article that came out, I have no idea. They're not even in America. <laughs> you know, all this stuff that they came out with to attack the farmers because they didn't want the farmers protesting. Well, now it's spread to Germany because exactly the same things are happening in Germany. And I was listening to some of the protests and what was being said and what the farmers were saying and what the government said. And it, it's obvious now the government doesn't work for the people because it was so disconnected. And I'll give you an example of a couple of things that were said then. Right, so the farmers demand, well, they're not even demands, they're just saying what their concerns are. They said that they're now getting higher taxes and it's forcing many of them out of business. They can't operate with this new level of taxation. They also called for help with the explosion in agricultural prices, saying that farming is just unprofitable now. They can't operate with these um, costs. They said that this is at the same time of subsidies being cut for farmers as well. So they haven't got the subsidies. And it's at the same time as the EU targets for the reduction of farming based CO2 emissions have come into force. So wow, talk about a quadruple whammy at the moment with all those things. And then to add insult to injury, a government spokesman 
came to the protest and said, look, we just don't have these you know, tens of millions of euros that you are asking for to help you. And then they said at the same time, the reason why, I mean, this is not a joke. This is actually legit. You can watch this online. They said the reason why is because they need to send billions of euros to Ukraine. So of course the farmers were in uproar. They're, they're saying, you can't give us tens of millions, but you can give billions to Ukraine. So this is why people are upset. You know, it's, it, it's because the country is not putting forth, wow, we've got a massive, <laughs> we've got a massive group coming. Might have to pause a second here, or you're not gonna hear anything because these ties are always loud. Oh, for goodness sake, this is crazy. Don't talk about bad timing. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Okay, back on track. That was probably the worst timing ever. About 20 minutes has come by since that cut just there. Uh, okay, anyway, where, where were we? We got to the German, hello. hello. <laughs> we got to the German economy. Right, so what, what has actually happened then? Well, the German economy was one of the worst performing last year in 2023, globally. Not, not just in Europe, but globally worst performing economy. Why? They're saying it's due to manufacturing exports. Isn't that interesting? Considering that that's exactly what I said would happen last year as a result of the, uh, the energy problems that Germany had, oh, closing down reactors, cutting out a load of uh, fossil fuels, Saudi Cab, um, <laughs> cutting out all the energy, it's obvious it's going to have a lot of issues and cut down on the manufacturing sector. But it's not just that. The other thing that's happened in Germany is they are considering banning the AFD party, who I've never heard of, let me just say, but it's the alternative for Germany. It's the second largest political party in Germany. And they see it, well, the other parties see it as a threat to democracy. And they are talking about banning the party so that it can't even be part of elections. Isn't that interesting? That is, uh, <laughs> what's that? The breakdown of democracy in Germany. Now, I know nothing about German politics or these parties, so drop a comment if you're a German watching. Let me know your thoughts on that. Because we also saw something similar in France with them trying to remove Le Pen from the ballot as well. So we've seen a lot of these interesting, well, in fact, we've seen it in the US. Uh, Trump was removed from, from one state. I think it's still going through the Supreme Court now. I haven't kept up to date on that to see if he's back on. But I did see he just won Iowa with over 50% of the votes, which was quite interesting. Not surprising because that is what I think is gonna happen. It's gonna be a rundown between Trump and Biden yet again in 2024. But one thing I wanna move on to now, let's go over here, this looks quite uh, peaceful actually, this area behind, is Iran and Pakistan, because this has really kicked off this week. So how did all of this start then? Well, Iran launched an attack on uh, what they consider terrorist groups in Pakistan. Pakistan reacted by firing rockets back into Iran. People have been killed on either side. Both countries are holding the other to account. We're seeing this larger breakdown and destabilization within the Middle Eastern region, which is no surprise because we knew this would happen um, with the Gaza-Palestine-Israel conflict that uh, is still ongoing. There's a lot of serious issues there, serious, serious issues. But one thing I do find quite interesting about the whole situation is previously you would see the USA coming in and doing peace talks and uh, calling for peace and things like that. This time China has taken up that role. So it's as if we're seeing this weakening of power of the US in diplomatic relations globally. And we're seeing this increase in uh, with China. We've seen this with a lot actually. China have been um, interceding in a lot of these conflicts and trying to uh, resolve them. So you look at Ukraine and Russia, China tried to get involved there. You look at Israel, Gaza, the, China tried to help there. And now they are trying to um, make peace talks between some of the conflicting countries, as it were. Now, we can't talk about geopolitics and the conflict in the region without mentioning, again, what happened last week. I, I mentioned it on last week's Walk and Talk is that the US and UK 
carried out strikes in Yemen. And at first, I, I didn't want to comment too much on it because I didn't know what the ramifications or implications of this would be because it's very easy to jump to conclusions. I saw a, a, you know, a number of commentators and videos online of the Yemeni general talking to millions of citizens and there was you know, half a million people on the streets and you know, all that sort of stuff saying, death to America, we're gonna do this, we're gonna you know, take our revenge on UK, U US citizens and all this other stuff, wherever they are in the world. <laughs> يتحمل كامل المسؤولية عن عدوانه الإجرامي بحق شعبنا اليمني ولن يمر دون عقاب. But actually, when I started looking at the military equipment, the weapons and things like that, it's not the way a lot of commentators are saying that. Oh, these millions, there's 20 million people in in Yemen looking to, you know, go after UK and US citizens and things. Well, not really. They are very restricted in terms of their military and movements and, and things like that. So I did just want to pass a comment on that because I've seen a lot of that this week. Oh, UK, US citizens need to be careful wherever they go in the world now because there's you know, tens or hundreds of millions of people that are going to be after them. I, n no, not really. I think that's just scaremongering at this stage. But there's definitely a, an increased security risk for sure. And I think it's going to continue. I mean, there's going to be a security risk within each Western country as we move forward. And just this week, Shell have announced as well that they're going to be reducing their shipping. In fact, maybe even stopping their shipping altogether through the Red Sea. And these Red Sea conflicts, this is going to continue on for a long time. Um, again, the forecast there is expect this to hit inflation, expect this to hit on goods and services. The things that you would normally get quite quickly could take a lot longer now to arrive. So I do think that we are going to see that uh, come into play as well. Now, one important thing I want to mention is something that has not been in any media. If it has, I haven't seen it at all. And that's what's happened between Russia and Iran. Uh, so Russia and Iran have just announced a new agreement between them. And what they're going to do is they've, they've gotten rid of SWIFT completely for all of their trade and transactions. I was looking into this and it's because now Iran has entered BRICS that Russia has uh, agreed to this direct bank transfer to avoid the US dollar. Now, some people were saying this is gonna cause hyperinflation for the US dollar and things like that. No, I don't think it will. And the reason for that is because there's just not enough that is gonna pull out of the, the supply. So this is around, I mean, this is a rough estimate because there aren't any accurate estimates. I think it's probably gonna be about $2 billion worth of trade in 2024 between Russia and Iran, but it could be more. Maybe they might ramp it up especially if they want to uh, form stronger alliances, you could see this ramping up. So is it going to cause hyperinflation like someone said this week? No, it's not. There's just not enough uh, trade between the two. However, if you see all of the BRICS nations and a lot of other countries start doing this, ramping up the trade away from SWIFT, away from the US dollar, then yes, this is going to have an impact on the US dollar. Now, the next big story, which wasn't in any media this week, is the Prime Minister of Iraq has stated that all US troops need to leave the country. And it was quite interesting. Again, I watched the, the press conference on it. Someone had very kindly translated it. So, well, in fact, you never really know when someone translates one of these things on TikTok or Twitter or whatever, if it's legit. But basically, let me tell you what this person translated it to. The Prime Minister was really upset and he said he was willing to allow the US troops in the country, but now he's not willing anymore after the US launched rocket strikes and missiles and things like that, killed Iraqi civilians. And he said that that was the, the last straw. But one comment that did make me laugh was the, the US was asked for a comment on this and they refused to comment. They, but they did earlier state, this was on the, the article here, the missile strike, sorry, that the missile strikes were necessary to protect peace. And I just thought, oh, the irony of that statement. How many times have we heard this before? Dropping bombs and you know, firing rockets on either targets or you know, where there's often civilian, um, you know, civilian populations there. They say, we're, we're killing people, we're dropping bombs 
in order to sustain peace. <laughs> I mean, the irony of that statement alone. Okay, let's walk back onto the path then. Uh, this was quite interesting. So the US government, although the article says the Biden administration, because you know in US politics, you have to name uh, the, the, the president <laughs> and assign any blame to the president for this. It always makes me laugh about US politics. But anyway, the US government, let's just say, because they say Biden was spying. I very much doubt Biden has been, um, you know, spying on, on people. I don't know if he uh, <laughs> would have the energy <laughs> to do such a thing. He, he's half asleep most of the times so when, I, when I see him. But anyway, it says that the Biden admin has been caught tracking opponents' transactions. So apparently this story goes, and again, take it with a, a grain of salt, that there's been a subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government. Uh, documents were revealed in the court that federal agencies advise financial institutions to flag transactions containing terms like MAGA, Trump, etc. So anything that was of that nature, they wanted these transactions to be flagged. But where the story gets really crazy is if you look at some of the keywords, one of the keywords is Bible. Yes. So it said that people who were purchasing Bibles or were putting the Bible in um, you know, messages and things like that or verses, they wanted all these people flagged. So that to me is the, the crazy one when, uh, when I heard that. Uh, who knows if these things are true, but it's uh, apparently there's this big committee ongoing at the moment, which isn't getting any press attention in the US. The letter highlights that FinCEN distributed materials to financial institutions to help identify transactions for federal law enforcement and the tracking of these individuals. It also says that the individuals had tags added to their accounts for of extremism. And of course, this is uh, leading now to this whole case around the violation of constitutional rights. Okay, next then, uh, and then we'll go on to the crazy story of the week. You're gonna love this from Davos. Uh, Trump vows no CBDCs when he's elected president in 2024. There's a little clip on X that I saw here of this. And he's basically saying that there's not going to be any CBDCs whatsoever. And he went on to say pretty much what I've said on the channel, actually, how it violates privacy, how they could just take your, your, your capital away. Um, you know, all these other, all these other things. So he, he talked about all of that. And surprisingly at this speech, people were cheering, which tells you that people do understand now about CBDCs. I didn't think the general public really knew much about them, but it seems that it is becoming more widespread. Like people do understand the implications of these things that are going to come in. Mark my words, even if you know Trump you know, says that they're not going to come in, trust me, later on after him, if he wins this year, <laughs> which will be interesting. Very, very interesting if you read some of the reports about the implications of his win. Wow, this will be absolutely crazy. It's everything from all these legal cases that are going to be launched against him, putting him in prison, all the way through to a civil war. There's like these reports that, and they're, they're proper reports, by the way. They're not just, you know, some random guy on the internet from his bedroom, <laughs> you know, eating his pizza. No, I mean, these are proper institutions that have put these reports together. They are wild. But anyway, I want to go on to the last report of the week. This one is uh, crazy. This story is absolutely wild. And it comes out of Davos, of, of course. Well, last year, I didn't, I don't think I touched upon this, but this year I thought, no, no, we've, we've got to touch upon it. Davos escort services. Yes, I am talking about those kind of escort services are in high demand during this year's conference. In fact, the demand is so high the rates have been pushed up to around 2,500 per <coughs> service provider, I think is the uh, best way. And then it says per session in, in brackets. <laughs> this is hard to read without, without laughing. As global leaders gather, leading to full bookings for service providers, with many local providers saying they've seen an increase of other providers in their area who may have been brought in. So brought in especially 
for the event. Oh, here's Kristin just catching up here. Actually, that's not a good time to put Kristin in the video at this uh, talking point. You, you, let's just pretend that didn't happen. So this Escort app then, uh, Tit for Tat, Eurogirls and others all said that money was not an issue for users this week. By the way, another stat I looked up, did you know that this is legal in Davos? And it has been since 1940. It's actually regulated uh, this kind of service, um, which I did not know. So that was a, a new one for me. But uh, as always, it's so crazy this week at Davos, these people flying in on their private jets. It's said that one person flew in, they had three private jets because of their staff had to be on these separate pri private jets. Why not just rent a bigger 747 or, or whatever they're going to do? I mean, it is, it, is, it is crazy. So they fly in on their private jets with their massive motorcades. Um, and then they say, hey, you guys need to stop flying. You guys need to stop driving. You need to stop eating, you know, uh, all this stuff. It's absolutely wild. And people are cheering this sort of stuff. They honestly don't see it. They, they can't see it. They are cheering it on. I even see it occasionally in a couple of these videos in the comments. People cheering all this stuff on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't see the hypocrisy of what's actually going on in the, the statement. But, you know, people have been, I don't know, mind controlled, I guess we can say. You know, they've got, they're under mind control not to see certain things that these politicians and world leaders are, are, are saying. But well, this has been a beautiful walk and talk as usual. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did with these beautiful views of the the lake and the park here. I'm going to continue walking around the park for another hour or so. But uh, thank you so much for watching today and being a subscriber here. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you next week now. Bye for now.